I love Kensington Market. I love the way what it represents. You can come from any part of this world and open a business here, and you will try. A lot of organic growth that happens on the street of Kensington Market. Them were selling, uh, they would sort of start to set up like bushels and barrels full of stuff that they could sell right on their sidewalk, right in front of their, their shop slash house. There was a time where, in and around Kensington Market, we considered that there were about 97 different Jewish congregations. The Mint Synagogue on St. Andrew, the Jewish community would have come from a whole bunch of different places. So they would have been coming from different parts of the Russian Empire what was then Austria-Hungary, you know, what we now call the Galician area. Hey, my name is Tom Mihalik, and we're at 190 Baldwin Street in the heart of Kensington Market in colorful Toronto. My father immigrated after the 1956 revolution. He had to leave Hungary. There was an uprising. So my father opened up his store in 1958. And that's where I worked with him. I worked with him since I was 12 years old. I'm 62 and I'm still working. People came to my father's store, there was no price on anything. Uh, truly the real immigrants at this city shop with my dad. Canada made Kensington Market and the Jewish Market, but without these people, with the, without the immigrant, it wouldn't be there today. This was the best place to be in the 1950s and 1960s. There was no better place where you could haggle with the merchants over the price. We had everything in Kensington Market. We didn't have to leave the market to entertain ourselves. You could go to a lone coffee shop and order yourself a tea or a coffee at mini snack bar, and mini would tell you, oh, Tommy, do I have a bagel for you? Do I have a butter Kaiser for you? Look at how fresh this butter Kaiser is. It was just an ordinary Kaiser. But the way she served it, the way she talked about it, you felt like you were you were king of Kensington when you ate one of those sandwiches. Anybody comes to Toronto, they all say, go to Gortzman's. We've been open seven days a week, I think, since we started. We the... established your name yeah. after so many years. Do you, we've been in the building about 70 years. Yeah. My, my grandmother ran the original fabric store. So yeah, when the artists started moving to the area, I figure we'll change with it. And we're still here. Hmm. Because you were always involved when when Bobby ran the business, mm. right? Oh, yes, yeah. When I was growing up and coming in here, my grandmother was here with my dad, you know, and now I'm here with him. Our lives have, I think, evolved around the, st the store itself. You know, spending time with my dad when my brothers and I would come down to help on weekends or Sundays. Years ago, as a market, it was still mostly a fruit and vegetable mm -hmm. market. The, lots of chicken trucks and fish trucks, there's all kinds of trucks around on the side streets. And that's changed considerably. I think now Kensington is going through another type of a change. It's really not a market, but I think it's a collective. And it's always been that. It's always been this really nice collective of businesses and restaurants and things like that that draws people to an area. Who knows what's going to happen, you know, in the future. The shift that starts to happen is that in the years after World War II, the Jewish community, in general, the economy starts to pick up again. And Jewish communities are able to move out to more suburban areas. So a lot of people move up toward Forest Hill, move up toward Bathurst Manor, which starts to get developed. Um, which is around Bathurst and Shepherd. So in the 50s and 60s, the Jewish community starts to decline in this area. And other people start, uh, there were always other people around, but other people started kind of coming in in fuller force, I would say. There were Portuguese people, there were the 70s, you get a whole influx of people coming from various parts of the Caribbean. As you walk through the market, you see like all kinds of different manifestations of these different moments in the market's history, some of which are sort of long, continuously run businesses, and a lot of which are just that are paying homage to or calling attention to something that they created. My name is Yvonne Grant, and I own a store in Kensington Market for the past 40 years. It's called Caribbean Corner. 
I think it's a stepping stone, this area, for most immigrants. When I came here first, I didn't want the politics of the nine to five. I did a study, like a feasibility study, from Eglinton, Bathurst, and Kensington Market. And I was lucky enough to find a place here because this is the one that I like best. And while I was here, the first um, maybe five years or six years, um, it was called Kensington Market Men's Business Association. I had it changed to Kensington Market Business Association because there were quite a few women around that were participating in businesses and had businesses. I just thought it wasn't right. I have talked to young ladies, people of color, that come to ask me what they should do and how they should do it and started their own businesses. For the time that we're there, it is like a cornerstone, you know, for the Caribbean community. And sometimes the children, the children that come to the, um, do their field trips and stuff like that, it's kind of important to them also, <laughs> yeah. My name is Paul Babiak. My shop is called Paul's Boutique and I moved into Kensington Market, October 2000. I, well, it's been almost 20 years, but I remember um, jamming with some old Kensington guys. There, there was a guy named Paris Rome, the hot, he used to make hot sauce, and Gypsy Mike, who's still around. And, and I used to go to um, Planet Kensington. And there was a, you know, punk shows and hardcore shows and all kinds of stuff. It's a mixed bag of music in Kensington. You know, I still see a lot of people that have been here before me and have uh, been a big, big part of the market before I arrived. And I try to pay them my respect because uh, we do owe a lot to all those people that lived here and made music here and and uh, started businesses here. I wonder what the future of a business like this is. But, but I'm happy here, and I've been able to be successful. What's the future for my kids and Will this type of business still be viable? Don't know. Thank you.